In Jesus' name we've prayed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. Be thou highly exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have gathered together again to worship at your presence. Lord, we are praying and asking that your presence will come down mightily in our midst in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to bless the name of the Lord for his mercies upon our lives. Let's begin to thank him for his marvelous um, works upon our lives. Let's bless the name of the Lord for his preservation, for how he has protected us. Let's give him praise. Psalm 103 verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Bible has commanded us to bless the Lord always. Bless the Lord and forget not the blessings that he has given unto you. For the past three months, the Lord has continually blessed you. Even when there are some days when um, it feels like, okay, what's, what's going on? But the Lord still showed up for us. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's give him praise. For he alone, he alone deserves our praise. He alone deserves our worship. Let's bless the name of the Lord. It says, who forgiveth all our iniquities and who heals all our diseases? Who redeemeth our life from destruction? As we go out about, as we go about our daily activities, the Lord has protected us from accidents on the way so many times so many times maybe we're driving late at night and we're so tired and we don't even know how we found ourselves on the next lane it's just God that protected us from accidents let's bless the name of the Lord so many people they just only stepped out of their house just to get something down the road and they didn't come back it's of the Lord's mercy that we are alive today Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's give him praise. For he alone deserves our praise. He alone deserves our worship. Bless the name of the Lord for the church of Christ for how the church of Christ is marching forward and how the gate of hell has not prevailed against the church. Let's bless the name of the Lord for the revivals that has happened in the church. Let's bless the name of the Lord for how God has been helping us, for how God has been helping us. Let's bless the name of the Lord for our leaders in the church. Cut across, cut, cut across the world for how God has been helping our leaders. The devil is fighting. He's fighting very hard. The devil is fighting very hard, but God has prevailed. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's thank him for his mercies. He has shown us mercy. He has shown us mercies because most times we tend to do things our own way. We tend to push God aside. We tend to do things, go our own way. But despite that, the Lord has shown us mercy. Let's thank God for his mercies. Verse 17 of Psalm 103 says, For the mercies of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children. Let's bless the name of the Lord for his righteousness upon our lives, for his mercies, his mercies that endures forever.
Let's bless the name of the Lord for the work that is going on on the mission field. For how the Lord has been protecting all our missionaries. Most of them, they are being sent to very dangerous places. But God, but God has been their protector. Let's bless the name of the Lord. We can't be there physically with them, but our prayers, our prayers can go a very long way. Let's bless the name of the Lord for how God has been helping them, for how the gospel of Christ is spreading across the whole world. Let's bless the name of the Lord. He alone deserves our praise. If it's left, left to them, they wouldn't do this. They wouldn't do this, but God, but God, but God has been helping them. God has been standing by them. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's commit them into the hands of the Lord that God will continue to protect them, that God will continue to preserve them, that the wisdom that they need, the wisdom that they need, that God will grant unto them in the name of Jesus, that all that they need also, that the Lord will provide in the name of Jesus. Most of them, they are in in countries where there has been ongoing war. Let's, let's, let's commit them into the hands of the Lord that the Lord will protect them in the name of Jesus, that the Lord will protect them in Jesus' name. I want to also pray for them, as many that in countries where um, the gospel of Christ is being for, forbidden, I want to pray for them that God will grant them the wisdom on how to preach the gospel and win souls to Christ in the name of Jesus. I want to also pray for those countries that have been resistant to the gospel of Christ, that the power of darkness over that country will be broken in the name of Jesus and the glory of the Lord will fill. The glory of the Lord will fill the whole earth. Let's bless the name of Let's um, Let's commit um, those countries into the hands of the Lord. Let's pray that the glory of the Lord will fill the whole earth. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for their families that are over there with them or they left them behind. Let's, let's pray for their families that God will continue to protect them in the name of Jesus. That they will not lack anything. They will not lack anything in the name of Jesus. Jesus' name we've prayed. I want to specifically pray for our regional overseer that is over there in Philippines. We want to pray for him that the Almighty God will continue to stand by him. Even at this moment, where they are when they are preparing for the um, global crusade happening in May, we want to pray for him and his team that the Lord will be with them, that the Lord will guide them even as they plan in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for them. 
that all everything that they are planning will be according to the will of God in the name of Jesus. That all that they do, all that they deliberate on will be according to the will of God in the name of Jesus. We're also going to pray for the global crusade happening in May that, that the almighty God will move in the name of Jesus that after that global crusade that we shall continue to hear testimonies of, of, of how the kingdom of darkness has been defeated in the name of Jesus. After the global crusade, lives will be saved. Lives will be won unto Christ in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Let's also pray for divine provision that the Lord will provide because um, planning the global crusade costs a lot of money, a lot of money. I want to pray for divine provision that the Lord will provide in the name of Jesus, miraculously that the Lord will provide in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Finally, let's also pray that the Lord will keep them safe in the name of Jesus from now on, even until the global crusade, that the Lord will pre preserve them and keep them safe in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Let's just open our mouths and thank God for bringing us into his presence. Let's thank him for keeping us alive. Let's thank him for bringing us from our houses to this place this morning. Thank him for, for giving us the, the, the breath of life to be able to be in his presence this morning. Let's just thank him for, for everything. Let's thank him for our families. Thank him for everything that he does in our life, for protection, provision. Thank him for, the, for everything. Let's just give him praise for everything. In January to now, a lot of people wish they could see this day, but they are not able to see. Let's just let's just thank him. Let's give him the, the praise. Let's just worship his holy name. Let's just commit the young adult ministry into the hands of the Lord. Let's thank him for, for his grace upon their lives. Let's thank him. For, for everything that he does. Let's commit the, uh, the young adults into the, in the house of the Lord. 
that God is going to continue to empower them, that God is going to continue to, to fill us up with his, with his presence, that we will we'll do wondrous things for his kingdom in the name of Jesus. Let's just commit the, the life of the young adults ministry into the hands of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's commit the um, service of today into the hands of the Lord. That those people who are coming, as we have come into his presence, let's, let's pray that God will give us, he will, he will give us a grace to open our hearts to receive. That as we have come into his presence today, it will not be a waste. That he will, he will, give, he will open our hearts so we will be able to receive whatever the Lord has for us this morning. Let's just pray and, and commit. Jesus' name we pray. Let's pray, committing the first timers into the hands of, of the Lord. Let's commit the, the people who are coming for the first time, the people who are visiting, the people who are returning, that as they come, that God will have, as according to the um to the to the theme of today, Bethel, the place of divine encounter, that as they come into the presence of God, they will have an encounter with God, that they will not go back the same, that as they enter into the presence of God, they will always be in the presence of God in the name of Jesus. Let's just pray and commit them in the name of Jesus. Jesus name we pray. Let's also pray for ourselves that as we have come into his presence today, we will always be in the presence of God, that we will have a divine encounter with God today even if we've had encounters with God in the past, that today will be different that God will, 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 will come into our hearts and we'll have an extraordinary encounter with God that we will talk about as for as long as we live let's just commit ourselves into the, in the hands of God
Jesus' name we pray. Let's pray committing the people who are still on their ways. Let's pray and commit them that as they come, that God will guide them. Let's pray that no accidents will happen as, as they come in the name of Jesus. That as they are coming, God will, the people who have even forgotten, that God will, give, will remind them that they're supposed to be here today. Let's just pray that as they are coming, they will come with open hearts. That as they are coming, God will protect them. Nothing will happen. They will not have an accident. They will not hit anybody. Nobody will hit them. Let's just pray that God will hasten their steps to be in, this, in our presence today in the name of Jesus. Jesus name we pray let's pray and commit all the ministrations today let's pray and commit the from the choir to the praise and worship to the to the word to the the, the search the scriptures to the review that that God is going to is going to be present that anything everything that we have practiced and we have we have you know rehearsed that everything will go smoothly from the choir praise and worship the word especially the search the scriptures that God will use the ministers, the people who are going to be teaching today, the people who are going to be ministering, that God will fill them up with his presence, that they will, they, when they stand up there, they're not just going to stand there just because, they're going to stand there to, 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 to preach the word of God, to, to just to minister to us, that if we're going to be filled, let's just pray for the ministers, let's pray for the, for the activities that are going to happen today, that God is going to be here, nothing will go wrong, all the, the preparations that we have put in to be here to, to, to make everything happen, that nothing will go wrong, that the God's presence will be here and it will be here in abundance in the name of Jesus, that nothing will go wrong. The enemy has no place in this, he has no place in this place in, in today in the name of Jesus. This service today will prosper in the name of Jesus. Thank you, worship the Lord. We thank you, King of Kings, for we know, Lord, that you will go and do it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we are coming, Lord, to take and implement everything that we have prepared for. We oh God go smoothly in the name of Jesus. Lord, let no hardship be upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's just pray and commit the church into the hands of the Lord. Let's pray and thank and thank God for, for, for the life of our pastors, the life of, of our, our general superintendent, the life of our, our uh, overseer. Let's pray that, let's just thank God for their lives and thank God for the church. Let's thank him for giving, like, 
for giving us this opportunity, the, the, the young adults, this opportunity to, to, to be part of, of, of what is happening in, in this church. Let's just thank God for the church, that God will, will continue to, to be, be present in this church. Let's just thank God for, for, for this church. Let's thank him. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this church. We thank you, Lord God, for our leaders. Thank you, Lord. That, Lord, as we let the church be, Lord, we continue to be strong in the name of Jesus. Your presence will continue to abide in this church in the name of Jesus. Yes. Your ministers, we thank you for our pastors. That, Lord God, we continue to be strong. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's just thank God for answers, answered prayers. Let's thank him for, for the prayers that we have prayed. Let's just, let's just thank him for, for answering every prayer that we have prayed, that, that he will continue to be with us. He will continue to be in our midst today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we bless your name for this morning. We thank you for the grace to come before your presence to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you because this is a day you have made. We we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for the grace to gather at your throne of grace. Father, we have come today. We commit this service into your hands. We ask the Holy Spirit to come and saturate this place in the name of Jesus. And we pray that as we live here today, we we'll all have an experience at Bethel in the name of Jesus. We'll go from here with divine encounters. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are taking our GHS this morning from GHS 253, my portion forever. All, all to Jesus I consecrate anew he is my portion forever. Only his glory henceforth will I pursue. He is my portion forever. Take, take the world with all its gilded toys. Take, take the world, I covet not its joys. Mine is a wealth, no moth, no rot destroys. Jesus, my portion forever. All hold to Jesus, my trusting heart can say, He is my portion forever. Led by his mercy, I am walking every day. He is my portion forever. Though he may try me, this blessed truth I know. He is my portion forever. He will not leave me, his promise tells me so. He is my portion forever. All, all to Jesus, I cheerfully resign. He is my portion forever. I have the witness that he, my Lord, is mine. He is my portion forever. Take, take the world with all its great toys. Take, take the world. I covet not his joys. Mine is a wealth. No mort nor rot destroys. Jesus, my portion forever.
and Jesus, my trusting heart can say, He is my portion forever. Land by His mercy, I'm walking every day. He is my portion in the name of Jesus. It's time for our saddest picture. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, for the social scripture this morning, I'd like for us to pray a little bit before we get into the word. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for how far you've brought us already. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for what you've started teaching us from the songs and even in the prayer. 
We pray that as we go into the search of scripture, I pray that you will teach us something this morning in Jesus' name. That we will not leave here as we came. Something about us will be pricked and will be touched in Jesus' name we've prayed. And it will cause transformation forever in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if you can tell I'm a little scared and shaky. But I want to ask us a question before we get into the search of scripture. By the way, the topic of today is Jacob returns to Bethel. Jacob returns to Bethel. Um, I want to ask us a question. First, we know what Bethel is, right? Bethel means the presence of God or the house of God. Bethel is where we meet the Lord or where the Lord dwells. If I could put that in a different word, it's where the Lord is dwelling. Or for you and me, Bethel could be a place where you or me have an encounter with Jesus. What I mean by an encounter is not like a one-time thing. I'm talking about where you go constantly for an encounter with Jesus. And I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been in a situation or in a place where maybe you promised God something and you did not fulfill it? Say you, you and God had an agreement on a matter. And when the time happened, you couldn't fulfill it. And the Lord today, this morning, is reminding you that remember our agreement. Remember what we talked about. Remember what I told you. Or remember what you promised me. Come back. You know, in, in, in the scripture we're going to read, Jacob, God called Jacob to Bethel. And God is calling you and I today to Bethel. The place of encounter. Or I should say the place where God dwells. Can we say the place where God dwells? Um, can we open to the book of Genesis chapter 35? That's our main text for today. Genesis chapter 35. We're going to be reading bit by bit as we go. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And also, just put your hand there and open to chapter 36. We're not going to read 36 this morning, but I'd advise us to read it. It's um, the history of Esau's life. If you don't read chapter 36, you might not know what happened to Esau and his children. And the Lord will help us this morning in Jesus' name. Chapter 35, who is willing to read for us? Genesis chapter 35. From verse 1. Genesis chapter 35. Verse 1 says, And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make, and make there an altar unto God, that appeared unto thee when they fledest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto, <clears throat> then Jacob said unto, unto his household, and all to that we are with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean and change your garments. And let us arise and go up into Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were around about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, which is the hand of Canaan, which is Bethel, he and all the people that were with him. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. But Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried beneath Bethel under the oak, and the name of it was called Alona Baku. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Pandunum and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is, thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name, and be called his brother, his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God 
Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation of a company of nations shall be of thee. The kings shall come out of the lions. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to thee I will give it. And I said, after thee will I give the land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering thereon, and he poured oil thereon. That's okay. Thank you, sir. Amen. Um, from last week's search of scripture, we, we learned about um, the defilement of, of Dina at Shechem. And even before then, if we're reading from even chapter 28 down to like 35, remember that this is the whole story about how Jacob ran away, like he got the birthright of his brother, got um, his blessings, ran away from his brother, followed his parents' advice, um, his parents' counsel to go to the mother's family and dwell there and got married there. Remember, he ran away and then he met with God at the place where he called Bethel because he had an encounter with God. He said he did not know. You remember the story that he was lying on a stone and he built an altar. And when he saw angels going down, up and down a stairway to heaven, he made a promise to God that if God protected him, if God kept him, if God preserved him from his brother, he was going to come back to Bethel. And there he was going to worship God. And while he was at his, bro, uh, his mother's brother's house, Laban, he forgot about the promise. And God had to remind him in, in chapter, I think chapter 34, God had to remind him, remember the promise you made to me before you went to Laban's house. I mean, God did not say, it's like you forgot, but I'm just going to add there, it's like you forgot. But I want you to come to Bethel. There I want to meet with you. There, you know, I want to commune with you. And along the way, Jacob again got distracted and, you know, he dwelt, like he was going back. He obeyed God, left Laban's house, and was going to, to Bethel. But, I mean, he met his brother on the way. They reconciled. God still preserved him. He got distracted again and stayed at Shechem. And the Lord told him again in chapter 35, verse 1. He says, come, go to Bethel. And the thing about God is his mercy is... It's, I'm going to use the word we use as young people, it's crazy, where um, you are being reluctant. I'm just grateful that I'm not God, because we're being reluctant, and he's like, come, come, I will help you, I will, I will take you there. We've made promises, and God is saying, remember it, but we are so distracted. Are you like Jacob, or am I like Jacob? What's going on in your life where... You had talked to God. You remember like when you give your life to Jesus? I remember there was a time when I told the Lord, I said, God, if you save me from this thing, I'll never do it again. Well, I thank God for that thing that God saved me from. I never did it again. Um, but what is that thing with you? Where you give your life to Jesus, you were strong in faith. And you told God, Lord, I'm going to serve you to the end of my life. You still come to church, oh. Yeah, of course, we see you in church on Sundays. But then is your life really like what God is expecting? Are you delaying on the way? And did you make a promise where you can't keep? And then you think it's only by yourself. The Lord is saying, like Jacob, he's saying, I've been patient with you. I've, I've been with you through it all. I saw it. And I know you as a man, you get distracted. But remember the scripture where Jesus said that by, with man alone, it's, it's not possible. You can't really please God. But he's asking that he said, with him, with him as God in our lives, we can do what is right. All things are possible. And this morning, the Lord is saying, come back to him. Let's come back to Bethel, where we were distracted. Did you make a vow? Um, like Jacob, you made a vow, and the Lord is saying, come back to Bethel. Come back to me. Let's perform it together. Let's do it together. You probably can't do it alone, but I'm here to help you. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Um, we're going to be looking at three different sub-sessions of this lesson of today. 
um, three subtopics. The first one is Jacob's encounter with God. And the next, the second one is Jacob's journey back to Bethel. And the third one is Esau's genealogy, materialism, and spiritual destitution. I pray that we will not be destitute in Jesus' name. Like in the place that matters and in the presence of God, that God will not come there looking for us, but then he will not find us. I pray that will not be our stories in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 35 says, and God, verse 1, and God said unto Jacob, arise, go to Bethel and dwell there. Make there an altar unto God that I appear unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household, to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments and let us rise, go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of distress and was with me in the way which I went. Verse 4 says, very important, it says, and they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears and Jacob hid it under the oak which was, which was by Shechem. I'm going to add verse 5. Verse 5 says, and they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the cities that were around them and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Remember when Jacob got distracted at Shechem and he stayed there? And something devastating happened um, to his family and to other people who could have known God through them um, from the lesson of last week, where his daughter, because of the distraction, you know, there was, the word is not coming to me right now. There was turmoil because of, because of the fact that he, dis- he drifted away when he was following God and his daughter went with the children of Shechem. And then the, the Shechem himself, the prince in that country of Shechem, saw the daughter and slept with her. And we know what happened afterwards. The brothers were mad. They were really angry. They went there, deceived them to circumcise themselves, and went into the city and killed everybody there. And Jacob was so scared. He was wondering what was going to happen. As he's, you know, on his way back to Bethel when God had called him, what would really happen to him? Because back in the day, when people hear that you killed people, they want to kill you, like they want to come for you. But he, he was wondering how is it going to happen that he will go through that journey and nobody will kill him. But when, the thing about God is that when God calls you, he says, come, I'm sending you to this place. Even though it might seem so difficult, um, it might seem so tough, it might seem so rough. In verse 5 of Genesis chapter 35, we see that uh, God says that, the Bible says that, God put in the heart of the people along the way, like the countries and the cities along the way, he put in them a fear that when they saw the children of Jacob or they saw the people of Israel, if I should put it that way, they were afraid. They didn't come close. I could say they respected them. You know, they stayed away. None of them was looking at them to fight. And this morning, God is letting you know that please do not be scared. Whatever that thing is, that promise is that he, you and he made that thing that you decided together. Remember that time? It was just you and God. Or maybe there was a vow that you actually said that you were going to do and it looks like the finance is so hard. The Lord is saying that I am going to help you. He says like he put in the, he put in, in the people along the way the fear not to touch Jacob when they could have killed him. He's also going to help you through this process. He's the Lord God Almighty, and he's going to help you. Amen. Amen. Um, So, um, one more thing I want us to learn also from that. Um, Remember when God called Jacob, right? He called Jacob. He said, come. And Jacob went He did not go alone. He went with his family. He went with his people. And he he told his people, first of all, he said, we are going to worship God, right? We're going to Bethel. And obviously, the Bethel is not that we're going to worship God and leave. They were going to 
be there. They were going to live there. They were going to dwell in Bethel. So he took his family along. And while he was going on with his family, he told them, give me those strange gods. Um, give them to me. And we thank God for the family of Jacob that they gave him the strange gods. They said they took out the earrings. They took out the gods that were with them. They gave it to Jacob. They, they trusted his leadership, let's put it that way, because the person who had an encounter with God was not his wives or his children. But Jacob was able to lead his family in such a way that they trusted his leadership. Now, the question to you is, how are you doing your home? I'm sure I do not qualify to talk about this or to ask the question, but at least the scripture qualifies for it. And according to the scripture, how are you leading your home? Does your family trust you enough to follow you to this God you're talking about? And, and even for me, how am I leading? How am I leading my own life? Do people at your workplace also trust to follow this God you're talking about? Or maybe they are looking at your life and it's different from what you're preaching. I pray that we'll look deep into it, that we're not just going to go and say, you know, like that's the way we talk about scripture. Oh, the Bible says, you know, let's do, let's do, let's do. And then we do not really do in the actual sense of it. When the Bible says love, do you love? Do you love enough? Do you care enough? Do you represent Christ enough? Do you stand for the truth enough? But that somebody can be able to look at you and say, I'm following you. Do you forgive enough? Do you, do you do that which you're supposed to do enough that people can be able to follow you to this God that you're talking about? Um, and, and the Lord is also talking to us as followers too. You know, I, I'm in a family where I do have parents, by the grace of God. Um, and yes, I'm not married. Um, yeah. So am I also able to let go and follow, you know? Because um, my parents, obviously, they're children of God. Am I able, as a child, to let go of my ways and follow my parents or follow you know, the children of God into the place of worship. Now, let's not leave, let's leave out the children of God because sometimes we have this excuse that, well, this person is doing that. Because I, I see this excuse a lot of time, even at work. I remember I had, we had this thing at work and I told my friends, I told my coworkers, I'm sorry, I can't do it. I did it before and I did not know what it was, but now I know I can't do it. And they're like, oh, pastors do that. Pastors seen all the day, um, every day. I'm like, yes, I've actually experienced it. I've seen a lot of pastors who are sinning in front of my face. But I'm not going to do it. Because it's not the pastors who called me into following God. Now, my question to you is, what is your own personal decision? Like, okay, the person who is supposed to be leading you is not leading you a right bow. What is God saying concerning the thing you're doing? Are you seeking to know God yourself? So God is calling you. What is that thing also that you're holding that is making you not follow, not go to Bethel. You know, there are a lot of people that one of the reasons they cannot go to God is because they are sinners. Now my question is, because you're a sinner, you should come to God. God will help you. And then for us who are children of God, what is that thing we're holding so much? Let's say, for example, you had that vow that you said, Lord, if you did this to me, I will give you all of my paycheck for the month of June. Now, did things become so hard that you could not give that paycheck? Do you know who sent you or who's calling you? Do you even know who your father is? Do you know that he owns the thousands of cattle upon the thousands of hills? And do you know that he can never let you suffer? I pray that the Lord will, that we would be so, that we will give all to follow Jesus, that there will be nothing that will be too hard for us to give up. And if for children, you see, if your, child, if your parent is following the Lord, eh, let me say, if maybe they say they are children of God and there's something they are doing that is not right, according to you as a child, you're seeing it. I pray that you at least just follow what they are saying. And if you're not, if you don't trust it enough, just look for your scripture yourself. Find God yourself. Go back to Bethel. That's what the Lord is telling us this morning. Come back to Bethel and let go of all that you're holding. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to go to the second subtopic. The second subtopic is Jacob's journey back to Bethel. Jacob's journey back to Bethel. I want somebody to read Psalms 93 verse 5. Very quickly, please. Psalms 93 verse 5. And I want someone to read Proverbs 16 verse 7 and 2. 
Proverbs 16, 7 and 2. Can, can we, please, the mics are right here. Proverbs 16, 7 and 2 and Psalms 93, verse 5. Psalm 93, verse 5. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thy house, O Lord, forever. And then Proverbs. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. This is okay. yeah. Say the verse again. Um, Proverbs chapter 16, um, verse 7 and 2. Verse 7. Just read verse 7, not 2. It's just 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Amen. Great. So we already, you know, talked about that. When you remember when God made the enemies of Jacob, so to say, to be afraid of him and not touch him on his way. Um, have you ever been scared to do what is right? Because, you know, people might hate you or I don't know, like your family might just hate you. Oh, one thing. At work, I'm going to still talk about it again. My coworkers do not like me. They really don't. And it's clear. They say it. And sometimes I've heard it. And one of the reasons, I mean, they respect me, though, because they respect the God in me. But they do not like me because I claim holiness. Mind you, I never talked to them about my claim. They just saw me and said, you. Because I will not do and I'm sorry, I'm not your, a part of you. I will not do. But the thing is, at least they still respect. If there's something in, in, at work and they need prayer, they'll be like, okay, let's leave. Shalom, please come and pray for us. And that's in spite of the fact that they believe I am claiming holiness. Now, from verse, from um, the, second sub, the second subtopic, now the question to you is, are you following God on afraid deadly? That's my own English. That you're not scared. The thing is, God will back you up. Don't don't be scared to follow him. Anyways, we're going to talk about the journey of Jacob in a very short time. So while he was going to Bethel, a lot of things happened to him. His wife died. One of the his maids, if I so to say, somebody who was like a pillar in his home as a maid, also died. And he did great things. I mean, what I mean by did great things is that he buried this maid. And he treated her well, and he loved her enough, and he buried her in one of the choicest areas, if I would say that. Um, And also, he buried his wife, um, and he got a a gift afterwards. Now, my thing is, for you who have people under you, or people that you lead at work or something, or people who work for you, I know a lot of us in America don't have maids, but what are you doing with the people around you? Do you love them enough? Do you treat them like one of your own? That brother or that sister who lives at your house, do you treat them as though they were your child? I heard a story or I heard of things that people, there are people who have maids um, and you go to eat with your maid and then your maid will drink water and your children will drink juice and then they will eat chicken and rice and stew and then now in Nigeria now or in Africa and then your maid will eat porridge. Now, my question, what are you really doing? Who are you fooling? Is, is it yourself or is God? <laughs> I pray that the Lord will help us, that we'll treat people all right. And even when Jacob's wife died, remember J- um, Rachel to Jacob was the love of his life. If you know what that means. I probably don't know what it means. But you probably know what it means. Um, <laughs> when you have the love of your life die. It's almost like your world is crashing always about to fail. Um, But the Lord is saying tonight that no matter the devastation, this morning, the Lord is saying that no matter the devastation you're facing or you must have faced, that he can help you. Know that, okay, like for example, you lost a a loved one. Um, Like for me, when I lost my sister, I could not believe that that girl died. She was, I'm sorry, my brother and my, if you're my sibling and you're here. She was my favorite sibling, and I remember when she died. I do not believe she died for three months. I cried at the, when she died just because, I mean, I'm an actress, so I acted it out. But I do not believe she died. It was three months after it occurred that this girl had died. Now, for you, I don't know what your own is that you lost. God is also telling you this morning that he's there with you. It's a thing that happens. For Jacob, God gave him 
a son that he loved dearly also. But for, for you, it could be a, a different thing. The Holy Spirit is here and he will help you. As you're, just go back to Bethel. The Lord will be your strength. He will be your shield. You will be so shocked at what God will do through this time of peril, through this time of pain, and how he will give you a new thing, a new song in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse, verse um, I'm sorry, the third um, subtopic is about Esau. Um, when we go home all year, if you've not read chapter 36, please read it. In chapter 36, Esau dwelt somewhere that God gave to him. And Esau became, he was Edom. So he was the father of the Edomites. Remember how God had promised Abraham that he was going to be a father of nations and his children will be blessed. It looks like every child that the scripture really talks about that came out of his loins somehow or, so for, some, or some form of way um, became a nation. Esau was not different from that. God also made him a nation where he had great children under him. Remember when um, Isaac gave, blessed him too, right? Isaac also blessed him, remember? Even though it was not like Jacob's blessing, but Isaac blessed him too. But now the problem with, the problem with Esau was that he decided, yes, he went through those promises like he enjoyed the blessings of God, but Esau did not follow in the footsteps of his father. He not follow in the footsteps of his fathers. He had great children, um, but he was destitute from the presence of God. He, he went his own way. Now the question to you is, is America too sweet? that you're forgetting God. I pray that the Lord will help us. That the blessings of God will not be a reason why we walk away from God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for how you've helped us, oh God, and what you've taught us. We pray that it will be imprinted in us and that it will truly make a difference in our lives. In Jesus' name we've prayed. And as we continue, continue with us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. Yeah, I believe our sister did uh, a good job with the site of scripture. Uh, at this point, uh, we're going to do the summary. Um, please, if anyone uh, have one question or the other, I see one hand. Uh, please, if you have a question, you still have time to raise up your hand before we proceed. Okay, Mama. Church, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, my question is from the teaching of today. We have seen how the wives or children of uh, Jacob submitted what they thought is, uh, was strange God. My question now is, I thank God is a uh, young adult day, and uh, they may provide answer to this, my question. In the case of uh, Abraham, God did not bargain with him to surrender Isaac. It was a clear instruction. Offer Isaac, and he obeyed. The time of Jacob, it was a pledge with uh, material things. He said, I will give you a tithe, one tenth, and I will worship you in this place. Now, some of us, or some parents, I know I'm not the only one in that category. We were intoxicated with the Holy Ghost. We made covenant and pledges with God that my children, they will serve God. They will worship you, God. Now, these children, some of them are up now. They decided to go their own way. Now, my question is, how are we going to do Are we going to compare them? Or we'll just be praying, or we we'll keep reminding them, you are a covenant child, oh. come back home, come back home. I want the answer from young adults. How do we handle this situation? Because today now, you see, the same people that... Parents used to make a covenant with God. 
they will argue with the Bible, tell you that this is America, and we have uh, this and that, uh, this is for men, this is for women, mix up everything. Because of academics, they've read so much, they now mix up everything and give you hot arguments to the point that you start staggering. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm still here. Ask if I'm satisfied, I will tell you. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mama. <laughs> wow. It's like you really prepared for uh, today. <laughs> no, it's just now. Now, now, now. God okay, is moving. Okay, okay. Um, to, to answer your question, Mama, I will start by by answering your question based on what, I mean, the answer you already given. Because you said, should we pray? Or should we continue to pray? Or shall we pray? Or whatever, how you want to put it. You know, the, the ultimate goal is for God to use these young ones, like the young adult the children, as parents. And when we make a covenant or vow or whatever we bargain with God, Ours is to fulfill our part as human to always remind God, God, this is the bargain, this is the vow I made with you. And to, for that to come to fruition, we have to also dip ourselves in prayer in committing those children to God's end, you know. Myself as a parent, you know, I, have, I know what I told God about my children, and whatever comes out to be their plight in life, I know the Lord is involved, you know, either good or bad. Because I know I cannot, you know, they are still young. They are, my daughter is uh, three. My son is one year plus. I don't know what they will become when they are 18, what, I mean, what choices they will make in life. But our responsibilities as parents is to always go back to God, you know, just like Job, you know. We can see that the Bible says, I mean, no, no, no one uh, as righteous as Job or as wealthy as Job. But, you know, paraventure, you know, he, he, he always, you know, go back to God to say, you know, paraventure, any of his children, you know, wanders away from the Lord, you know, or they are doing things that are not pleasing to God. He always pleaded on, you know, on their behalf in the presence of God. So as parents, we cannot do anything. We cannot do anything about the part our children, you know, take in life. That's a fact. So our responsibility is always remind them, you know, counsel them. Always tell them that the Lord is in need of them. You know, myself is a testimony. Being here today <laughs> is by the grace of God. Let's say I gain admission in Nigeria, I would have joined a court, you know. And my, 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 my school there was yeah, University of Benin. That's, I know, you know, my mom is from, Benin, uh, from Edo State. So my, 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 dad, I, my dad is not here, he's, he's gone. But that was my, my uh, like, goal when I, when I go to, to school, I wanted, I wanted to join a court. But God, you know, in his mercy redirected my path. I found myself in America, and that, that's when I know that God has a, a bigger assignment for me, you know? So, as spirit, and one thing I, 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 you know, the prayer is key, and I think parents are neglecting the power of prayer. That is why our children today always look into the world and want to find a solace, where there's no peace, where there's no solace, where there's no joy. You know, my, my, my father always do something that always, uh, that is, that, that, that stuck with me till today. I remember between the hour of 12 in midnight to 1, I would say, this man is disturbing me. He will always come by my, you know, bedside where I'm sleeping, and I would just do like this, ah, again. <laughs> you know, you are disturbing my sleep. This man again, like every night, my dad will be praying, just pray for, like, he will start, I'm the first child, he will start from me, go to the second one, go to the third one, go to the, uh, the fourth, then the fifth. That's when he, when he prayed, then he will go and sleep by himself. So, parents, we cannot do anything about our children's, uh, you know, even though we say, oh, I want to be a doctor. 
It's good. They can be a doctor, but when it comes to spiritual things, it's their choice to make. You know, that's one thing that the power of choice, that's what God gave to men in the Garden of Eden. He said, you can eat of all these things, but accept this. And what did men do? Men made the wrong choice and hid from the bad apple, the bad fruit. So God will help us as parents. God will help us as a family. And all we need to do is just to go back to our knees and pray and keep, you know, committing our families to God's end. And when God have time, I mean, when God's time is, I mean, is, 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 is right for them, surely they will always fall in line and align their wills with the will of God. And I pray the Lord we have his way in, the, in our families in Jesus' name. Uh, with the time we have, we, think we have a limited time. I won't be able to go through all the uh, points that I have here, but I will just continue with the trend of my mass question that as, uh, as believers, as one who have you know, come out of the world and we claim to be uh, Christian and accept Christ Jesus as our Savior, we ought to know that being a believer is not by just saying or a profession or thing that we want to do. It is a responsibility. And what is the responsibility? Is serving God. Because when you look at it, God created everything. God created the world. God created the, 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 the sea. God created human being in it. And when it's time, he put man in the Garden of Eden and uh, gave them assignment to oversee everything. And that overseeing is to see, to see to it and give glory to God in all the creation of God. So... What I'm trying to say is that going to Bethel, you know, it's not that Jacob wants to go there and dwell and build a altar and uh, establish a business or create something gigantic, you know, that the world will be talking about. But is the, 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 the commitment, the consecration, the, the, the encounter that Jacob had when he, he was running away from his brother. You know, so for us today, we do not have uh, a physical, like uh, a place called Bethel, like, you know, because the place that Jacob prayed and had an encounter, the place was, was called Luz, that's L-U-Z before that time. And when he got there, he encountered God. That was when the word Bethel, Bethel was officially, you know, uh, uh, being attributed, and in the in the Hebrew, you know, is is called you know the the the, the Hebrew believe you know they call it better, and the meaning is uh, uh, the house of God, house of God. That means in the house of God there is presence of God, in the house of God there is fullness of joy, there, in the house of God there is encounter with divine power and purpose in life. So. Uh, for us today, we are not going back to, oh, let's go back to, like, we want to go to Nigeria, or we want to go to Bethel in Nigeria. No. Our Bethel is at the point that we give our life to God, and whatever commitment we made, God, if you save me from this, I will do this. You're making a vow. You know, and part of our Bethel location is on our knees, how we pray. You know, our prayer today is, is it should be our Bethel. You know, because when you pray, you're communing to heaven. You're making connection to heaven. And every spot that you need heart and you prayed, that is your Bethel. So we are not going to say, oh, we want to go to Bethel, or God is telling you, uh, go to Bethel, then you pack your bag and go. No. God is telling us today, go to Bethel, is go on your knees and pray. Go on your knees and pray and commune with heaven. You know, we're talking about children, young adults. We, we, okay, some people, you know what? My children are not doing well in America. They are misbehaving. They are not listening to my instructions. Then I will send them to Nigeria. <laughs> send them to Nigeria. That's good. That's good. Do you know what they're going to do when they get to Nigeria? No. So everything falls back to that word, better. 
Where is that place that you've known God? Where is that place that you've met with God? Where is that place that you've encountered the power of God in your life? I only have two minutes. So um, let's read that verse, Genesis chapter 35, verse 1. That's a memory verse for today. Uh, To save time, I will read here from here. Uh, And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go unto Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God, that appeared unto thee when thou fled from the face of Esau, thy brother. You know, this is an instruction. And one thing I learned myself from this uh, uh, SCS today is that it seems at times God, you know, God allows us to experience some things and uh, when we do, most especially when it comes to material things, you know, uh, good life, you know, enjoyment, we tend to forget God. We tend to forget God. And if you, if you, if you really pay attention to the Bible, you know that when there is enjoyment, when there's people are at peace with themselves, you know, no troubles, they tend to forget where the, where, the, where the Lord is bringing them from. You know, for this message to come out to, 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 to Jacob, something had happened. You know, we, we know what happened, you know, when, they, when they, Jacob did that word, defy, and the sons, you know, went and killed those men. And he was so, you know, he was perplexed, he was scared. He was in the point of despondency, you know, that he wanted to like, you know, hey, these people, if they're going to revenge, I don't have the army. You know, he went back to God. And God said, you know what? You have to leave. Go to Bethel. Go to Bethel. Go to Bethel, you know? And, if we, you know, I, I, was, I, I did some little reading about Bethel. The word Bethel was, uh, was uh, named three times in the Bible. And the first was with, uh, with uh, Abraham, you know, where he built an altar. The, the second was with uh, David, where he... Uh, Divided the spoil from the uh, war or uh, the place that he conquered. And the, the one we are talking today is that battle where there is encounter with God. We're not talking about that of Abraham. We're not talking about that of uh, David. But we're talking about that point, battle at which encounter, divine, you know, manifestation was occurred. So as believers... We are not learning this today just to say, oh, we know about battle. But our battle is where we ourselves today met with the Lord. Have that encounter, you know, we dedicate our life, our, our being to God. So we should always remember uh, our first love. I would have, you know, say we should read, read the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 4. But we can read that on our own because our time is fast spent. So our first love for, for Christ, the Lord, we should always remember that. Irrespective of anything we are going through in life, we should believe that God will always see us through. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, please let's uh, be in the mood of prayer right now and commit the, to- uh, the, the study of today to God's end, that the Lord will help us to be faithful to our vow, to our commitment to him. You know, before most of us left Africa, we know, oh, I want to be this. I want to preach the, uh, the, the gospel to this soul, to this person, to these people, to this, you know. But when we get to America, we, we are after dollars. Some people are taking many shifts, you know. Some people are taking double shifts just to uh, make ends meet. I don't blame them. It's, it's what the system requires to pay your bills. But in the midst of all this business, we should find time to always remember our first love for Christ, our dedication, our commitments. You know, uh, 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 at the point we, we, we encounter the power of the Lord, we should always remember that. So let's pray that the Lord will help us to be faithful to our words to him, to our commitment to him, and the Lord will give us the grace to do his will in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. And all the time, we are in better. Just help me tell your neighbor that I am in better. A place of encounter. 
I don't know how you want to worship God this morning. If you feel like lying on the floor, just do it. If you feel like shouting, just do it. Because somebody is going to encounter Christ this morning. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Only in you we put our faith. You are our firm foundation. Yes, Jesus. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand. Everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He will never let me down. He's faithful to generations. So why would he fail now? Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He will never let me down. He's faithful to generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. Ooh. He will fail. He will fail. He will never fail. He will never, never fail. He will never fail. Your father will never fail. Mm. Yes, Lord. I'll see God joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength Cause I build my life on Jesus He will never let me down He's faithful to every season So why would he fail now? He won't Oh, he will not fail He won't He will never, 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 never fail Joy in chaos. I got peace that makes no sense. I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength. Cause I put my life on Jesus. He will never let me down. He's faithful to every season. 
So why would he fail now? He won't Tell him he will not fail He won't Keep trusting him he will never, never fail He won't fail That's why I'm here better He won't fail was built on him I'm safe with him I'm gonna make it through rain came wind blew my house was built on him I'm safe with him I'm gonna make it The 
Mighty God, Mighty God, You have done marvelous things. You have done glorious things. You have done wonderful things, Mighty God, Mighty God. things mighty God oh you have done you have done marvelous things you have done glorious things you have done wonderful things mighty God mighty God mighty God mighty God our voices worship this God he has done wonderful things in our lives he has done beautiful things that our mouths cannot even express them all Lord we are placed in a place in a place in a place of greatness in a place where there is joy Lord we lift your name higher because indeed you have been doing it and you will keep doing it in our lives my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands say by the love is the most beautiful one the most beautiful among thousands among thousands and thousands he's my beloved
in his presence can we be silenced in his presence can there be silence in his presence can there be silence in his presence We lift our hands We worship you We lift our hands Lord, we worship you We lift our hands we
Morning, church. Praise the Lord. That was a taste of Bethel. That is what Bethel means. It can happen in your closet. It can happen in church. It can happen on the road. It can happen anywhere. It is an experience. It is a presence. I want us to do something quickly in five minutes. They will come back again and lead us in that song. I want us to go on our news and enter into that encounter in Bethel. Worship God from the depth of your heart. This is out of our bellies shall do what? Shall flow rivers of living water. I know we are young adults, you might have been ex expecting a jamboree service, but we really want to have an encounter this morning. We want to visit Bethel this morning. And from your heart, sing this song unto God. I mean it. Don't look at who is beside you, who is in front of you, who is behind you. If we end the service this way, God has done something in your life. We don't just want to teach it. We want it to be an experience of better. We are
that body that has been on your heart can you table it to God in this atmosphere sicknesses cannot thrive in this atmosphere sin iniquity cannot thrive in this atmosphere this is a rare moment for you to talk to the father can you talk to God in less than 30 seconds take advantage of this moment of this atmosphere Can you give a round of applause for Jesus? Can you jam those hands? Can you jam those hands for Jesus? If you are excited, if you know God has done something in your life this morning, jam those hands for Jesus. Come on, come on. Is that the best you can do for our God this morning? 
Is that all you have? Is that all that is in you? With all that you have gotten this morning, somebody praise the Lord. That one you have done. Do it like this. Put your hand like this. Put it in your pocket. That one is for you. So we want to do the one that is for Jesus. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The I am that I am. The Rock of Ages. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. The one that does not lie. The Rock of Ages. Our Father, your Father. The Lord of Lords. The King of Kings. The first and the last. The best of the best. The greater than the greatest. The bigger than the biggest. Come on, John Bless House for Jesus. Somebody pray. You can have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Are you glad to be in church this morning? Somebody, are you glad to be in church this morning? Are you excited to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? I don't know if there's anyone worshiping with us for the first time. And we are so glad to have you in our midst. So if you are here, oh, she's already with me. Can you please stand up for recognition? Let us do it the way we do it in D.C. Come on, come on with excitement. Let's welcome them. Give them a hug. Give them an handshake. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Please, we would like you to introduce yourself, tell us your name, and anything you'd like to share with us. My name is Ella, and Lucy invited me. You're welcome to church. Hello, my name is Ashley Earl. Uh, Ianu invited me. Thank you for having me. Good morning, Church. My name is Brother Ademi Kaode. I just moved into this area, so I'm so happy to meet you. Good morning, Church. I was being invited by Pastor Charles. Pastor Charles, my name is Makia. Can we celebrate them one more time? Can we celebrate them? Come on, celebrate, celebrate them. You are very, very welcome to church. And now we'll take our announcements.
Can we please raise up our tithes and offerings as we pray on them? Father, we thank you for this provision. I brought this token that you have blessed us with to offer unto you. We pray may it be acceptable with your presence in the name of Jesus. We pray that out of the abundance that we have given unto you, we replenish in bountiful folds in the name of Jesus. And those that have not, please give unto them. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. So the ushers are beside you. They will pass the bag. Please drop your offering in the bag. And also, you could zell to the number on the screen. Praise the Lord. We have a few announcements over here. Young adults in the house, make some noise. Come on, come on, make some noise. Really, really? Come on, don't fall my hand this morning. I said, young adults, make some noise. Yes. So our young adult conference is coming on the 23rd to the 26th of May in Kingston, North Carolina. And the team is what? Come on, the team is what? The team is what? Exactly. Youths in the house. Make some noise. Come on. We are the youths. Seriously? Really? I say youths, make some noise. Okay. Youth and young adults, make some noise. Thank you. <laughs> Come on. It's always a joy to be in the house of the Lord. So our youth fest is coming from the 20th to the 23rd of June, also in where? Kingston, North Carolina. And our team is what? Emerge. So please start booking your hotels, pay your fees, your registration fees, and all clear your schedule, and please plan to be there. And also, please, all young adults, please wait after the service. Please, every young adult, new, first-timers, invitees, uh, members, everybody, please do wait after the service. We want to do something quickly and interesting before we take our Bible reading. Uh, as young adults, we want to spice it a little bit. So we want to do something, Bible scrabble. I want to see how many of us really know the Bible. So media will project the first one for us. Do you have it? Quickly. So I'm going to explain how the game works. Okay. Can everybody see the screen? Can we see the screen? Okay, so how it works, I think it's self-explanatory. Is it? Is it self-explanatory? Yeah. Do we get it? 
If you don't get it, raise your hand. If you don't understand what, it, sorry, quickly explain. Okay, so these are names or these are literally names in the Bible, but it is scattered the way it's arranged. So you have to think logically about it and respell it the right way. Do we understand? Do you get it? Okay, okay. So what is, okay, the first one is like a bonus. To be sure everybody understands it. What is the first one? Bethel. Come on, what is the first one? Bethel. Okay, yes, now. So we're going to take the, the first, how, how are we going to do this? Should everybody do it or should, should we like call people one by one and the first set of people, or the first set of people to complete it? Okay, row by row. Okay, so you nominate people row by row. So let's start with this row. Okay, mommy, please, can you give her the mic? Come on, celebrate. Celebrate your role. Make some noise for them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. J-A-C-O-B, Jacob. Come on. So the middle row, who are we nominating? Okay, Sister Yano. You guys should be getting ready or thinking about who you are nominating your role. A counter. No, no, the third one, right? The third one. She said encounter. Is that correct? Really? Okay, next row. So, sister Zoe, are you taking scores? Okay, thank you. The next, this row. Nominate. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Please give me my. That's Israel. That's Israel. Okay, okay. Let's go, let's start again from this row. Nominate somebody. No, this row. Nominate somebody. All of you are raising hands. Nominate. Okay, YouTube. Okay. Genesis. Genesis. Okay, the next row. Nominate. Nominate. Okay. Beside Daddy and um, Brother Pastor John, Israel. Esau. 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 Okay. Okay. Nominate. Who are we nominating? Okay. Pilar. Sorry? Pilar. P-I-L-L-A-R. Pilar. As in Samson pushed down the pillars. Pilar. I don't even know that one. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> that was good. Please clap for him, clap for him. The next row, quickly. Okay, a hand is up. Yeah, yeah. Which one? Alter? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Next row, thank you. Okay. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Okay, so now the last one. How are we going to do that? Okay, media, media, the last one. The, the, last, the last one, media. What is the last one? Say it. Offering. Can we clap our hands together for Jesus? <laughs> Sister Zoya, are we correct? She, okay. Encounter was right. Come on, clap for yourselves. Celebrate yourselves. So let's go to our Bible reading quickly. Our Bible reading is taken from 2 Peter chapter 1 and 2. 2 Peter chapter 1 and 2. The second letter of Peter, chapter 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, 
add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath shown me. Moreover, I will after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. At this voice which came from heaven we heard, when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Second Peter 2 but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bore them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish, in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam the son of Basor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, 
clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved for ever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in bondage. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to a wallowing in the mire. May God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord has promised us that he will be with us even unto the ends of the earth. He says he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He says he will hold your hands through times of life. He says you should dwell in his presence. So we just want to invite you with us tonight this morning and to commit with us that in the presence of God is where we will dwell, it's where we will spend our lives in the presence of God is where we won't leave the presence of God we will stay there with God every single step of the way as he fulfills his own bargain we will also keep our part and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name.
Where the rivers cannot overflow me Where my feet are on the rock I want to hide Where the blazing fire cannot burn me In your presence, oh God
That's where I am strong in your presence, oh Lord, my God, in your presence. That's where I am strong, seeking your faith. right now because we have come to the presence of God we have come to touch God's face we have come to touch his grace we have come to seek his face you into our midst right now. I pray that you take over in the name of Jesus. I present myself, Lord. I do not know what to say, but I pray that and I ask that you speak through me. Lord, let your words touch hearts tonight. Let your word convict souls tonight. In the name of Jesus, I pray and I ask that we'll have an encounter with you, Lord. I pray and I ask that anyone that has come to today's service in person and listening online lord jesus i pray that that they have an encounter with you in the name of jesus amen amen um today we'll be looking at um bethel the place of divine encounter bethel the place of divine encounter um our text will be from genesis chapter 35 verse 1 to 7 I'm going to need two volunteers to read um, the scriptures. I want one person to read from the King James Version and the other person to read from the New Living Translation. Okay, Sister Chidera. You can start with anyone, any translation. Okay, so Genesis 35, 1 to 7. Uh, This is the NLT translation. Then God said to Jacob, 35, 1 to 7. Um, Then God said to Jacob, get ready and move to Bethel and settle there. Build an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob told everyone in his household, get rid of all your pagan idols, purify yourselves and put on clean clothing. We are now going to Bethel where I will build an altar to the God who answered my prayers when I was in distress. He has been there with me wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all their pagan idols and earrings, and he buried them under the great tree near Shechem. As they set out, a terror from God spread over the people in all the towns of that area, so no one attacked Jacob's family. Eventually, Jacob and his household arrived at Luz, also called Bethel, in Canaan. Jacob built an altar there and named the place El Bethel, which means God of Bethel, because God had appeared to him there when he was fleeing from his brother Esau. Can you read from verse 9 to 15, please? Sorry. Now that Jacob had returned from Paddan Aram, God appeared to him again at Bethel. God blessed him, saying, Your name is Jacob, but you will not be called Jacob any longer. From now on, your name will be Israel. So God renamed him Israel. Then God said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. You will become a great nation, even many nations. Kings will be among your descendants. And I will give you the land I once gave to Abraham and Isaac. Yes, I will give it to you and your descendants after you. 
Then God went up from the place where he had spoken to Jacob. Jacob set up a stone pillar to mark the place where God had spoken to him. Then he poured wine over it as an offering to God and anointed the pillar with olive oil. And Jacob named the place Bethel, which means house of God, because God had spoken to him there. Thank you. Um, King James Version, please. Chapter 35, verse 1. And God said unto Jacob, Arise up to Bethel and dwell there, and make thee an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fledest from the face of Esau, thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange girls that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. And let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, and all their hearings, and were in, which were in their hairs. And Jacob eat them under the oak, which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the city that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, which is in the land of Canaan, that is Bethel, he and all the people that were with him. And he built there an altar and called the name Hel Bethel. Because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. Verse 9. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padan Haram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall no more be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to thee I will give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering thereon, and he poured oil thereon. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him, Bethel. Praise the Lord. May God bless the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Um, so from where we've read, um, we see that God called Jacob and gave him an instruction. He said, arise and go to Bethel. Um, before, previous chapters, before chapter 35, we saw that um, when Jacob was about to go meet his brother, um, he went to God in prayers regarding the meeting with his brother. And there, God appeared to him, and God touched his life. But it's... Between 30, chapter 32 and 35, it was as though Jacob was like being sneaky or something that God had to call him back again and say, go back to that place where I met with you. God is a merciful God. God is a merciful God because um, he knew that Jacob has been destined for something, and he did not want Jacob to miss that which he had prepared for him. That's why he gave the instruction again, arise and go. There are so many of us here today. You met with God previous years ago, but you've allowed coldness, lukewarmness. God is calling you today. God is telling you, come back. I'm waiting for, I did not leave that place where 
we first met, where we first had our dates. I did not leave that place. It's calling you back to the place so that you, you, will, you can, so that your destiny can fall in alignment. Praise God. We see that Jacob has been deceptive all through the years. Like, even a prophecy also came out, like God told his mom that there are two nations in your stomach. One, the younger one will, will the older one will serve the younger. Like, and we can see, like, through the journey, Jacob has been deceptive. He deceived his father. He deceived his brother. He deceived Laban because he wanted to get married to the lady of his choice. He, he, was, he kept deceiving and deceiving and deceiving. And um, until he met with God in chapter 32, where God touched him. But there was still, like, that, that, deceptive, that deception was still in him. It was not completely gone. God knew. God saw it. He was like, no. You are Israel. You are not Jacob. You are bigger than Jacob. You are Israel. You can't continue this way. You can't continue in your deception. So he called him back. He called him back. Um, praise God. Um, so we we'll think that after that encounter, like I said, after that encounter he had at Penel, he would be committed to God. He would be serving God. That is the story of many of us today. Like, we we'll pray, we we'll cry out our eyes to God. Like, God, if you do this for me, I'm not going back to that. The next minute we're back to what we just cried to God for. And God is a merciful God. And he's still calling you today. Please, if you are here, if you are in this um, like situation... Don't harden your heart. Don't close your heart to God. God loves you. He has something bigger than what you are saying right now. He has something bigger waiting for you. Amen. Amen. Um, so the story of Jacob and the encounter he had at Bethel is just like the story of God being the portal and we are the clay. We see that um, in the potter's hand, he will make something, but it does not fit what he has in his mind. So he will scatter it and rebuild it again. He keeps rebuilding and rebuilding and rebuilding until he gets that perfect image. That is what God does at Bethel. It's not a one-time thing. It's not a place where you can just go in and come out. Psalm 91 says, he that dwelleth. In the secret place. It's the place where you live in. Just like your physical house. That is your permanent address. For some of us that own houses. That is your permanent address. You go out, you come in, you are there. You are living there. That's what God, that's the relationship God wants with us. As believers. He wants to keep working on us. Until he gets that perfect image that he has in mind for us until we are transformed, until we are renewed. He wants to keep working on us. And I pray that today, even as you open your hearts to God, for him to walk upon your hearts, I pray that he's going to, like that perfect image, that he's going to transform our lives. He's going to renew us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, what do we do when, um, um, rather, what are the blessings or the benefits that we get when we come to battle? Number one, um, there's going to be a change. As we saw in Genesis chapter 35, verse 9, it says, And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padan Aram and blessed him. Verse 10 is my emphasis. It says, And God said unto him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called any more Jacob but Israel. And he called his name Israel. We can see here that it changed or called. Why? Number one, Jacob obeyed God and he, he went to Bethel. 
to that place. And God changed his destiny. Your life becomes lighter, especially when you are in obedience to God. When you allow God to work upon you, like you will see that things begin to fall in place. Things begin to work out for your good. Things begin to take alignment. That's what Bethel does to us. Number two, you have an understanding of who you are. We live in a society, we live in an age and time where we as young people we struggle with identity. We struggle with identity. Um, I'm just going to share this story. Um, I remember on my 26th birthday, um, I was praying to God, God, my name is Zoe. Well, I don't know, I know that the meaning of Zoe is the life of God, but I really don't know what it is. I don't have an understanding. My parents just told me it means the life of God, but I want to experience it. I want to have an understanding of what my name is. And I prayed to God. And I think some time late last year, I got an understanding of what the name is. Like, like it just busted open. Like, it was like a new revelation. Like, I've never seen that in... I've never seen that kind of um, enlightenment. Like, my eyes... As though my eyes just got open to a new reality. And it made me realize the identity, the authority that I have because I am in Christ Jesus. And what I used that um, understanding to do, I began to walk in that reality. Every time I would declare to myself, I am the life of God. I, am, I bear the life of God in me. Like anyone that comes, that's, I told God, I said, because of what you have shown me, I now walk in it. Like anyone that comes in contact with me, like they will not live the same way they came. Like even before I talk to them, like something will pass through me to them because I bear the life of God in me. Praise God. That's what Bethel does to us. You have a new identity. You put on a new identity. Jacob here, he was, after that encounter he had, his name changed to Israel. And today, we are calling on the God of Israel. We are calling on the God of Israel. And today, no nation, go and verify it, no nation can touch Israel because of the covenant God had with Jacob. Because of one single encounter at Bethel, everything changed. Praise God. I just want to tell you, Today, your identity is going to change. If you are here struggling with who you are, like you are confused about, okay, what, what am I on earth for? Like, this is the place. This is the right time. You have come at the right time. And I pray and I ask the Lord that he's going to reveal who you are. You have an understanding of your place in Christ Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do something new in our lives. Something new in our lives. Something new in our lives. Oh Lord, do something new in our lives. Something new in our lives, something new. One more time, one more time. Something new, do something new, new in our oh, lives. Something new, in significant in our lives, Lord. Do something new, new. do something in new, Lord. Life. Oh Lord, oh Lord, do something new, something new, something new in our lives, something, life. something, something new. new in our lives. Oh Lord, Amen. Amen. 
the next um, benefit that we get from encounter um, from Bethel is is that a new level of blessings are unlocked for us. Why? Because of that obedience. Obedience to God unlocks a new level of blessing. We see in Genesis 35 verse 11, it says, And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. And today, that is the reality. Israel, no matter how you fight, that nation of Israel is still standing. Because look at it, it's here. God promised Jacob. He said, a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. And kings shall come out of thy loins. Because Jacob obeyed a new level of abundance found in God was unlocked. And generations after that, they don't even need to pray sometimes. They will still enjoy. They are covered in that, in that, under that promise that God has made. Because God is a man who do not lie. He does not lie. He does not lie. You do not lie. You do not fail. What is hard for you to do? It doesn't exist. Oh. It, it can, can never, never exist. Oh. You do not lie. You do not lie. You do not fail. What is hard for you to do? It doesn't exist. Oh. It can never ever exist. Oh. Amen. Sorry. <laughs> um, another um, benefit that we enjoy when we come to Bethel is that our fellowship with God, our relationship with God is deepened, is established on the firm foundation. We see in verse 13, he said, And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering. In verse 15 says, And Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him, Bethel. Jacob now had an established place. It does not necessarily have to be like maybe the church building. Your heart can also be a place where you meet with God. In your closet, maybe at your workplace, like you find a spot where you, you say, this place is dedicated unto God because when I come to this place, I know that my answers, my prayers will be answered you have that assurance. You have that full confidence because you've already established that place that, God, as I'm coming to this place, I know I'm not living here the same way I came. I know that before I even open my mouth to pray, I will have my answer. God is calling you today. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to have a really, an intimate relationship with you. An intimate relationship with you. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, as we round up. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Um, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That he presents yourself, your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable unto God. Um, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. 
which says, it says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. Because we see Cain and Abel, they both went to offer sacrifice unto God. That's what God said, offer unto me sacrifice. They both went, on to, they both went to offer sacrifice unto God, but God accepted Abel's sacrifice. Why? Because it was living, it was pure, it was holy unto God. That's the kind of sacrifice the Lord wants from us today. He says, this, this is truly the way to worship him. Verse 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Right now, I just want to us to bow our heads if you are here and you know within you I'm not going to ask you to come out but you know within you that you are not in right standing with God you are battling with secret sins You've, maybe you are like Jacob you had an encounter before but you lost it. You can't find your way back. God is calling you today. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He wants to have a fellowship with you. He wants to have a love affair with you. God is waiting for you. He wants to change your destiny because he sees that you are not... This Zoe that you're looking at now, that's not what I planned for you to be. Why are you running away? That's not what I planned for you to be. I have something bigger for you. God is calling you. If you have lost your touch with God, you are fighting every day with rising and falling, with coldness. With lukewarmness, today you are hot, tomorrow you are cold. God says, I would prefer that you are either hot or cold, not in between. I just want you to pray to God wherever you are. Say, God, this is me. I have come that you will touch me. That you will touch me. your heart it's not too late to come back I tell you it's not too late to come back there's nothing out there there is absolutely nothing out there I surrender all Come back to him. He's waiting. He's patiently waiting for you. There's mercy. There's mercy. There's mercy for you. There's mercy for you. No matter how far, no matter how deep you have gone, 
There's mercy waiting for you. Come back. Dear Lord, I commit these ones that have rededicated their lives to you, Lord. I pray and ask that you will have mercy on them and restore them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, we just want to pray. If we can all stand to our feet, we want to pray. Today, the heavens are opened upon us. I want you to go before God. I want you to go before God and ask for an encounter in your spiritual life, in any area of your life that you need a touch. I want you to go before God and ask that God, I have come. I have obeyed. I have come to better. I don't want to live here the same way I came. If I were you, I will open my mouth and cry out to God. Open the floodgates in abundance and cause your rain to fall on us. Open the floodgates in abundance and cause your rain presence we have come to your presence lord let it rain let it rain oh your rain let it fall on us let it rain opened upon us the heavens are opened upon us the heavens are opened upon us if I were you I would use this opportunity and cry out to God for an encounter I will use this opportunity to cry out to God for an encounter for a touch because me I don't want to live here the same way I came I don't want to live here the same way I came I don't want to live here the same way I came I am tired of my position right now I need a new level I need a new level in my spiritual life I need a new level in my finances I need a new level in every area of my life pray on to God cry out to God cry on to God the heavens are open the Lord is set the Lord is set to bless us the Lord is set to touch our hearts tonight the Lord is set to oh Jesus keep praying on to God keep praying on to God keep praying oh Jesus let you wait Upon your way, let it fall on me, Lord. Here, hear your presence. Oh, let it wait for your way, let it fall on me. Oh, pull. 
father is your father cry out to him talk to him tell him that place that you need a touch tell him that place that you need a change talk to him is your father Baba, oh, oh, oh. Baba, oh. Baba, oh. Oh, it touched us, and 
داد جای we thank you we thank you for this touch we thank you for this touch Lord we thank you Lord glory be to your holy name glory be to your holy name Lord Lord I pray may we never lose this touch Lord May we never lose this encounter, Lord. May we never lose these blessings, oh God. Oh God, help us to sustain it. Grant us the grace to sustain it. What you have started, grant us the grace to sustain and to continue in it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, before we leave today, um, so I remember last um, at young adult service that we had, one of our sisters here, we didn't know what she was going through at that moment. We didn't know that she was being wheeled into the operating room. And we over here, by the Spirit of God, we were just lifting up praises unto God. Anybody can remember in the basement, we were singing and dancing unto God in advance for what God is about to do. And the theme of that young adult service was the promise. God has promised us, no matter what the devil, no matter how the devil tries, it will not fall prevail and today our sister is here to give glory to God she's here with her testimony she's here with the promise Sayanu. she didn't want to do this but I just felt that she should share it with the whole church Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Initially, I didn't want to do this, but, you know, Sister Zoe um, told me I was going to do it. And I'm not just going to summarize today as I used to do. I'm going to share of God's goodness and his mercy. When I was pregnant and my initial care was at Frederick, I was told I had five fibroids. I was really scared. I had so many things going through my mind. And they said due to, you know, one thing or the other, they would have to transfer me to John Hopkins. I said, okay, I know God is in control. My husband wasn't here. You know, he traveled back to Canada and then it was just me. I called him, told him. I just said, let's keep praying and believing God will do it. When I got to John Hopkins, it was a different story. 
they said even the fibroids, they were, in, they were not worried about it. They were worried about my kidney. They were worried about my blood pressure. And I kept going every, twice every week to John Hopkins, to and fro, for NST, for blood tests every week, you know, just to make sure everything is going well. And then one day the doctor said, you know what? You can't go. You can You can't do forty weeks. At the seven weeks on dots, we're gonna bring this baby out. I'm like, no. I don't want. You know, I don't want to go through this section. I kept making excuses, doing it. You know, seeing a lot of things. And the next time we went, she was like, "Have you guys chosen a date yet?" We looked at each other and we're like. No. And she said, you have to choose a date right now. So we decided we would come in for induction because the Irish doctor was like, we will let you try labor first before doing the C-section. I said, okay. Then we chose October 13. We went on Friday, thinking Saturday, because they told us, you know, 18 to 24 hours. Saturday, there was nothing. Sister Esther, Sister Happiness came. You know, they were with me at the hospital, but expecting that something was going to happen. Nothing happened that day. I was in pain. Even after the epidural, they gave me booster shots twice. It wasn't still working. The doctors were worried, but at the same time, they didn't want to scare me. But I know these things. So, on Sunday, they said we would have to do a sick session. I said, okay, but epidural hasn't been working. You gave me booster shots twice. You know, I, didn't, I still felt the pain. I was in serious pain. And they said, we're going to try our best. They wheeled me to the Hohar and they gave, I was my, both hands were, you know, taking one thing or the other. I couldn't even, I couldn't do anything by myself. And they were just about starting. They did a test, a scratch test. I felt it the first time. They gave me another booster shot. They did the second test, I felt it. They gave me another one. And they did the third one. And I was like, I can't feel it. But myself and my husband, we kept singing, kept praising God. And at 1 p.m., 1 or 9 p.m., they brought the baby out. As at that point, I didn't know braces was going up for me. The young adults were downstairs praising God in advance. I believe strongly that it was, it was that braces that made it go so well. Because they were scared of bleeding, I didn't bleed that much. The nurse came after, I think, a day or two, and she was like, you're on your feet already? That's impossible. I just want to bless the name of the Lord. And this is the blessing, the promise that God has given me. Ireolua. That is the goodness of God in my life. Praise the name of the Lord. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around, turned it around. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around for my good. What the enemy, what, what the enemy, enemy. Oh, 
Jehovah turned it around. He turned it around. Turned it around. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around for my good. We decree and we declare that the Lord will preserve this child in the name of Jesus, that no the devil will not steal their joy in the mighty name of Jesus. That all that they need for this child, to train up this child in the way of the Lord, that the Lord will provide in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Praise God. One last thing before we go. Um, our pastor is going to come give us a special announcement. Praise God. Let's give, let's give a round of applause as he comes up the stage. the Lord. If you experienced Beth Bethel here today, can you say a loud hallelujah? hallelujah? If you experienced Bethel within your soul, can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah? And it will be permanent in your life in Jesus' name. We've been blessed today. We thank the Lord for the service, how God used our young people to impact us today. And we're trusting that they will go from might to might, from strength to strength in Jesus' name. I want to thank the Lord for everyone that uh, is here, everyone that joined, first time returning. We pray that we'll see you again because this is just uh, a glimpse of many more things to come in the future. And uh, we know that uh, even when we come again for special occasions like this, it will just keep blowing up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Like our sister said, there's no better day to make, this such, to make an announcement like this. Actually, there are two announcements, and these are wedding, wedding announcements. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, what, what, what I'm going to do is, I will make one of the announcements today. The second one, I'll leave it for next Sunday. So, be here, you get the announcement for the second one. Uh, is that okay with everybody? <laughs> Everybody say combo. We'll defend the combo till the first Sunday. Uh, two of our brethren have prayed. They've sought the face of God in the area of marriage. And they believe that they are meant for each other. Amen. Amen. And by the grace of God, uh, in two, about two weeks from now, they will be getting married. And uh, the first person is one of our sisters with us in this church. At the regional level, she's an able assistant, an able leader in the person of Sister Salome Mesoma Ogwani. Uh, I believe uh, I believe she's she's on this on Zoom. Can we do we have her on Zoom? Can we show her picture on Zoom? Some of you, perhaps maybe when you see her, that you will know who she is. Um, you should. Is she? Are we able to show her? Okay, about to praise the Lord. She will just uh, say hello to you all. As we speak, she's actually in Lagos. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And uh, Sister Salome, can you just wave at them? Aha! You can see her smiles. You can tell that she's exci excited and very happy. And some of you didn't ask who is the other person. You all know who the other person is. Amen. Uh, there's no other person but our able brother who is based in Nigeria, in the person of Brother Lanry Ojelabi. Brother Lanry, can you? Can somebody shout hallelujah? Amen. We thank the Lord. God is good. Can everybody say, God is good? And all the time, amen. The wedding will be coming up in Lagos, April 6th. Our uh, time is 9 a.m. Uh, we understand the short notice. If you're able to make it, that they will be excited. 
But if you cannot make it, something else can make it, right? Nobody ever gets tired of support. Your dollar can make it. Talk to your neighbor and say, your dollar can make it. Because dollar has got wings. And today is uh, instantaneous. You can support them in cash, in kind. The wedding comes up once again, April 6th in Lagos, and the time is 9 a.m. And we trust the Lord that the Lord will perfect this union. Our sister has waited this long for this special blessing. And this, we know, is the generational blessing for her. The blessings of the Lord will make them rich and add no sorrow in Jesus' name. But the word of God says, whoever finds the wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. That favor, embodiment of favor will surround them in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We've come to the end of the service today. We're going to share the grace. <laughs> okay, please pardon me for mentioning that there too. I will leave the second one for next Sunday. Can somebody give God praise? Can somebody give God praise? Actually, there are many of them lined up for this year. Many lined up for this year. So it's just going to be coming uh, discreetly in batches. Praise the Lord. Have you been blessed today? It's such a good way to end the service. And I know the young adults have good, good things laid out for us. Young uh, people don't leave, I'm sure. And uh, today is really their day, but I told them I had to just, you know, jump in and just make this quick announcement because of the proximity of the wedding day. Ordinarily, you will not see me today. I just want to be there and just soaking the word and soaking God's presence. So I'm going to invite Sister Zoe again to come up or the moderator to come up and come and end the young adult service for today. Uh, come up. Let's give another clap offering. Yes. Jump those hands for Jesus. Come on, come on. Young adult, jump those hands for Jesus. Are you happy? Are you glad you're in church today? What a way to end the service. We'll take the grace. Turn to your neighbor as you always do. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. With a smile, with a smile. If the person is not smiling, please find somebody else. Surely, find another person, another partner. Surely, surely, goodness and mercies shall follow you and your household all the days of your life. And me and you shall dwell in Bethel all the days of our life forever and ever somebody say amen god bless please young adults let's just come together thank you